Hello, and welcome to Day 29, Becoming Peace, Meditation, and Inspiration. The name of today's session is The Green Path Does Not Climb, where we're going to take a front row seat to the most important event in the history of the world and understand how essential trials, challenges, good friends, and mindset shape us in critical ways. Yesterday, day 28, we had an opportunity to lay down the cares of life and spend time in the silent Sunday ritual of meditation, helping us come closer to becoming an instrument of peace to ourselves, our family, and those around us. One of the secrets of life is being able to be open to the idea of literally suspending our own agenda of what we think is best for us and instead grabbing hold of the agenda God has in mind. God sees the picture from a forever point of view and we only have the capacity to see the here and now. So trust Him. The purpose of this channel is to help you move to a place of not just feeling peace, but actually becoming peace. So here in this space, you'll find many solutions, meditations, ideas, and strategies for bringing more peace into your life. Make sure you have a notebook and a pen close by in case you choose to record any thoughts, impressions, and incoming inspirations you might have today. This week, our essential oil spotlight is doTERRA's Console. Console is a combination of floral and tree essential oils and will accompany us as we close the door on sadness and take the first steps of a hopeful path toward emotional healing. It has frankincense, patchouli, Lang Lang flower, amorous bark, sandalwood, rose flower, and osmanthus flower. It provides a very comforting aroma when you use it, and it serves as a companion while you work toward hopefulness. It also creates such an uplifting, positive atmosphere. So go ahead and grab your essential oil bottle and place one drop in your hands. Then rub your palms together. Place your palms approximately six inches away from your nose and breathe in through your nose. Hold and release through your mouth. And you can continue this practice as you desire as we go through this entire session today. And as we slow down the pace, take a deep breath in. And out. Good. Make sure you're sitting comfortably in a chair or on the floor. Rest your feet comfortably with your head free. Close your eyes. Take deep breaths. And enjoy floating deep inside your soul for answers today. When you ask questions, and wait silently on answers to come to your inner soul. You can know you're hearing the voice of God in your heart. Be aware and mindful of the gentle impressions that come to your heart all day long. I'm going to invite you to follow the sound of my voice, and we are going on a journey, a journey of all journeys, to witness the most single important events in the history of mankind. You witness this as it unfolds. I stood in fancy one starlit night in a garden above the sea. I saw four men as they entered there to the place called Gethsemane. Three remained by the gate to guard while the other walked on alone. 
and knelt at last in the shadow dim by the side of a rough-hewn stone. His face was sad and drawn and gray as he knelt on the dewy sod, for his eyes were bright with an inner light as he raised them up to God. Though light of stars was feeble and faint, tears came to my eyes in a flood, for his suffering brought not the sweat of men, but instead great drops of blood. Could it be, I thought, as I stood here, that this is the Son of God, sent forth from his home to walk alone in paths that men must trod? Could it be he that made the earth and all that dwelt therein, who had walked this life with perfect tread and shunned the paths of sin? Was this the man who had raised the dead and had caused the blind to see and had cleansed the leper of his white skin and had walked on Galilee? From here I could see his face drawn white and anguish in his soul made bare. And I turned my face in shame that night as he knelt in the starlight there. For lo, I did not understand what brought the blood to his brow. Ah me, if I'd but only then, the understanding that I have now, I too would have knelt by that rough-hewn stone and begged to share his pain. For he was the Lamb of the living God, sent forth from the throne to be slain not to die for the things that he had done, but for the children of men, to give his life as a ransom true, that they might be raised again. He knew the power that in him dwelt, and the trial that lay before. Would he have the strength on the cross to stay, when the pain he could bear no more? He who had blessed the living and dead and had caused the lame to walk, could he remain on the wooded cross while the cry of derision mocked? And then I knew why the drops of blood appeared on that gentle brow. In spite of the power that still was his, he must endure somehow. They nailed him to that wooded cross and raised him into the sky and laughed and mocked and taunted him while they waited for him to die. But low in heaven and deep in hell, the souls of men were tense for the Son of God on that wooded cross was making recompense. Could he shun his power and there remain until the close of day? Or would he falter and not endure his sacrifice pass away? Would all that he had planned to do to save the souls of men be thwarted in that fateful hour and he a failure then? What hell was this? That mental pain as he was hanging there. I'll never know the strength it took for him that cross to bear. Not only in the realm of God, but those in prison too were offering prayers that darkest day that he would see this through. Oh, how we prayed in that black hour with all our souls intent that he upon the cross would stay until his life was spent. For someone must atone for sin. Lo, he had volunteered there in that realm where you and I as spirit children lived. 
for it was ruled that someone true must needs unlock the door, which barred the path and hedged the way of growth forevermore. My God, hast thou forsaken me? His words of anguish came, and all the souls of heaven wept on every lip his name. But as the day grew to a close, a shout of triumph rent, It is finished, came the joyful word, and then glad voices sang. What songs of praise and loud acclaim swelled in that court above, for he had conquered death and hell our Prince of Peace and Love. I know that I can never pay through all eternity the debt that always will be mine for what He did for me. He died that day that I might live. My soul He bought with blood He gave me part of his own power to stem sin's rising flood. If I will dedicate my life to him each passing day, if I will labor for the right and lead men in his way, it may be in an age to come, I'll hear my master's voice. The debt you owed to me is paid. I'm glad you made this choice. My Savior walks today with me. I feel his presence near. And while my hand doth rest in his, I have no need to fear. For though the way be dark, the path enticed with sin If I will firmly keep my trust, I'll find my way to him. The road is too rough, dear Lord, I cried. There are stones that hurt me so. He said, my child, I understand. I walked it long ago. But there's a cool green path, I said. Let me walk there for a time. No, child, he gently answered me. The green path does not climb. The burden is too great, I said. How can I bear it so? My child, he said, I remember its weight. I carried my cross, you know but how I wish there were friends with me who would make my way their own. Ah, yes, he said, Gethsemane was hard to bear alone. And so I walked that stony path, content at least to know that where my master had not been, I would not have to go. And strangely, when I found new friends, my burden seemed less sore, as I remembered long ago. He went that way before. What a beautiful tribute to the gifts that our Savior has given to us. For just a moment, keep your eyes closed. Take a deep breath in and out. And in difficult days to come, I encourage you to come back to this meditation and really, truly get in touch with what He did for you. He has your best interest at heart, and He loves you so much. 
always remember this. Let's come back, continue breathing, and when you're ready, slowly come back, keep breathing, gently open your eyes, good, and as you float back to consciousness, allow yourself to surrender to the peace you've just experienced, take another deep breath. And exhale. Imagine if you actually had a chance to sit with God face to face and talk to Him. You would for sure want to write down everything that He told you. Well, meditation is just that. It's a chance for you to receive messages from God as you sit and hold space for Him to show up in the silence. So make sure you write down whatever you feel prompted to. In Psalm 18, verses 1 and 2, we read, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Peace comes when we decide to set aside our own agenda and place our willing heart in the hand of God. After all, our will is really all we have to give. Well, it's about that time. Enjoy the relaxation and peace you're becoming and experiencing as you move through the rest of your day. We're on a mission to help others experience more peace. If you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and share this video with someone you think could benefit from this channel. Also, please check the show notes below for lots of great information, along with this week's suggested music track, It Is He, with vocals by myself. Well, congratulate yourself for showing up for you today, and remember, the secret to life is super simple. Just take in a little bit more light today than you did yesterday. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye for now.